Em julho de 2010, a Rackspace e a NASA se uniram para criar a iniciativa de software de nuvem open source, OpenStack. Desde então, a plataforma cresceu bastante e, a partir de 2012, começou a ser gerenciada pela OpenStack Foundation. Para falar um pouco mais sobre isso, a gente está aqui com o Alan Clark, um dos fundadores da OpenStack Foundation. Alan, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. All right. Uh, Alan, I, I started the interview with a little intro about OpenStack, what it is, but I wanted to, for those of, of your viewers who don't know what OpenStack is, if you could give us an overview. Back sure. in 2010, when OpenStack was founded, mm -hmm. was created, um, what was the idea behind this platform and what was the objective? Well, it, it started out very small, right? The, there was uh, under 30 people, under 10 engineers, but the idea was let's produce cloud, pr cloud computing and let's do it as open source. That was pretty innovative at that point. Others had tried it, but uh, had not been able to produce anything of scale. So the idea at that point was, let's manage resources, right? Let's manage the compute network and storage resources, but let's manage them at, at scale, right? So let's get the utilization up, let's get the flexibility, Let's get the agility that, that we that we really need in today's computing world. That was the vision, um, and the vision actually is is continues along those same lines. So it hasn't gone away. It has evolved a little bit because of new technologies and ideas, which we can talk about later. But the fundamental is still the same. Mm -hmm. And as you said, it was a very innovative idea to have an open source uh, cloud computing back in 2010. And since then, the industry has evolved a little bit, and we seem to be in a moment that big companies are starting to embrace open source uh, more freely, like uh, uh, Microsoft with Azure uh, mm -hmm. supporting open source uh, tools, mm -hmm. as well as AWS, those big uh, cloud providers. Why do, you t why do you think that the industry is moving more and more towards uh, open source? Because competition. Competition drives you to open source, right? Uh, so let's look at OpenStack. So OpenStack, uh, we have about 3,000 engineers that are contributing code. That code's coming from uh, over um, 800 different organizations, okay? So it's not just corporations, it's research facilities, it's governments, it's research labs, universities, and so forth. That's a lot of talent. That's a lot of variety of talent. and Let's think about it from a competitive perspective. If I want to create a competitive product, I've got to come up with an equivalent set of talent, right? And I've got to come up with an equivalent set of quantity of engineers contributing code, right? If I want to produce something in, a, in the same time frame, that's very difficult and it's very costly. So open source is, is competitive because of talent It's very competitive because of cost savings, right? And it's very competitive, in this case with OpenStack, it's very competitive because of the market influence. All those vendors, all those different organizations are creating this huge ecosystem, right? And driving this notion of cloud forward. It's very hard to compete against those. Mm -hmm. So you basically cut costs by having a community developing the technology. It's a shared. It's a shared cost model mm -hmm. right? instead of doing yourself. Yeah. yeah, that's from the corporate perspective. From the individual's perspective, why do I do open source? Because it's innovative, right? It's very fast moving. I can learn new skills. I meet people. I, I meet people not just from inside my company, but I meet people with equivalent or even higher talent from other companies. So I'm networking with, with people from other companies, other organizations across the world. So talking about this network, uh, last year I got the chance to go to the OpenStack Summit. It was re really interesting to see the, how the community engages with this technology, especially for me since I'm Brazilian, to see how Brazil works with this technology. Mm -hmm. And I saw that although it's a small community, it's a very uh, engaged community. And since you're here in Brazil for some talks around mm -hmm. OpenStack, Uh, one year later from uh, the summit, 2016 summit, uh, how do you see this technology being adopted and how the Brazilian community engages around OpenStack? So, so, in, so the community is international, right? We have uh, 187 countries participating and the participation varies, right? Uh, so 
it's important to note that <coughs> I only speak, I don't speak Portuguese, but I speak English and I speak Spanish. But when we built the tools, um, we have to try to, to engage many different cultures, many different languages. And so uh, we, we've gotten pretty good at it. Um, and that's allowing uh, people from Brazil that don't speak English, they only speak Portuguese, to come and participate and engage in the community. People from the different nations, you know, have very different technical skills, very different needs, but yet with uh, an open community such as OpenStack, uh, it enables them to come and participate. Now, in Brazil, uh, OpenStack is still very new. There is some, some, there is adoption, particularly at the corporate level, that's happening. Um, but the communities um, are, are kind of at that beginning phase, right? And um, and that's okay. You don't have to be, you know, be way down the curve. Uh, uh, any, uh, uh, everybody goes through that starting point, right? Um, but it is happening. I'm seeing a, a huge increase in adoption and deployments here in Brazil. Um, so it's a great time to get in. It's not too late, I guess is my point. So although OpenStack is growing, we're still seeing some troubles, uh, some challenges it faces in the industry. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that. One of them is the lack of... Um, skill. Skill, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Like, yeah. It's a lack of skill. You don't have a lot of engineers that are specialized in OpenStack. Uh, how's the foundation trying to deal with that? And uh, trying to convince people that OpenStack is a good idea, we should have more people studying it and developing it. So that's one area. Skills is one of the, the first barriers we ran into, right? When, when the community is growing like it is um, and, and you're getting worldwide adoption, knowledge is, is key. Um, and people are getting gobbled up. As soon as they get the knowledge, they get gobbled up, right? Um, and, and uh, into corporations and research labs and so forth. So knowledge means opportunity. So we looked at it and said, okay, how do we increase the knowledge? We've developed a ton of uh, materials out there on the OpenStack website. We have tons of vendors that are providing training opportunities. And with OpenStack itself, a lot of those vendors supply some type of certification as well. But within OpenStack itself, we also created a certification program. So we've put the training materials out there. There's tons of uh, videos and so forth, um, and also uh, certification. But the board met uh, just a couple weeks ago. We realized we're, we've come a long ways in solving this problem, but we haven't hit the finish line yet, right? Because mm -hmm. we're still growing. And um, we're focusing in on particular problem areas. One of them that we identified in our, um, our meeting, our, our leadership meeting a few weeks ago, was the need to grow the number of people that know how to contribute. Okay? So it's one thing to say, well, I'm great at coding, but it's another to say, I know how to, to contribute. So we've tried putting some materials out there but we're finding that they're not getting um, used as much as, and, and we're not eliminating some of those barriers um, that we've identified that will help people to, to contribute. So that's going to be an area of focus for the next oh, probably six months, eight months. And another issue I've, I hear from companies, I've heard that in uh, the summit, and I understand it's still uh, a problem inside of OpenStack is the complexity of the tool. You have many vendors offering it to companies, and sometimes companies don't know where to begin with. So, how is trying to how is the foundation trying to deal with this this issue? If I understand your question correctly, so there are many vendors, right? And and those vendors are collaborating for a specific purpose, right? Their their business has uh, um, a business model, they have a market focus mm -hmm. um, and a, a target that they're after. Um, those differ widely, right? Some are there, for example, right? So SUSE is, is there to build a enterprise-ready distribution. There are others there that build distri uh, a distribution of OpenStack. 
um, but they might be focused on community, right? Um, there are vendors there that are contributing um, for storage, right? To, uh, they're there for hardware to make sure OpenStack runs well on their hardware, be it uh, compute devices or networking devices or, or so forth. There are there companies there, vendors there that are there to pl provide professional services, right? So their interest is that having uh, individuals that are t have the talent to be able to go out and provide that type of service. So the needs vary, the products that they produce vary, right? Their target might be private cloud, their target might be public cloud. The beauty of open source is it can be used in many, many ways. That in itself can make it very complex, yes. right? So going there and saying, okay, I understand OpenStack can be hard because you have so many people looking at it from so many different angles. Yes. That, that's the point. I mean, when you go to a proprietary solution, uh, you talk to one company, they have their offering, and it's very focused. When you have different vendors with an open source yeah. community, it, it, it can be tough for the company trying to understand that. It can be. It can be very tough. And we recognize this. Um, so we built um, something we primarily called DevCore, defining core. What's the core piece of OpenStack? And we recognized as we were going along that really what we're after is some type of interoperability, right? So we renamed this thing called DEFCOR into the Interoperability Workgroup. And we've developed a um, set of, um, I, I'm, I don't want to use the word specification, but essentially we defined a specification that showed here are the things that are, that are the key interoperability pieces, okay? And we've built a, a, a set of tests to go around those. And in order to use the word OpenStack, right, in your product, you have to pass those tests, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so that's one way we're trying to convey to users, hey, we do know what OpenStack means. Even though their markets are different, even though their product focus is different, we still want that interoperability. E eu conversei aqui com o Alan Clark, um dos fundadores da OpenStack Foundation e diretor de inovação da SUSE para Open Source. Alan, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome, thank you.